many wonderful people here, even some from Mad River, <laughs> even some from the comfort of their homes. <laughs> Wave at the folks at home. Wave at the folks over here. <laughs> we have, yes, everywhere, everywhere. Welcome to everyone joining us here on Zoom, joining us here in, in person. What a delight to be here for this uh, this Shabbat. It's a special Shabbat. Every Shabbat is special. And this one made extra special with some friends from Mad River Valley Jewish community uh, who are here with us uh, to celebrate Shabbat uh, and love the abiding connections between Jacobs and many uh, in Mad River. And we're so delighted to have you. And uh, they are sponsoring the Oneg, so you must stay. 
also from Mad River. Uh, we have a very special uh, drush, some words of Torah uh, from the always in service, uh, putting out chairs as we speak, uh, Safira London Ashkelo, who's going to share some words of Torah about the Shemitah, this year that we're about to enter, a year uh, of, uh, of rest for the land and more. So uh, I, I, I'm so looking forward to that. Uh, and just to be here. Um, and, uh, and now it's time. It is the month of Elul as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah. I'm gonna invite up Aaron Temkin uh, to blow the shofar. And I'll invite folks to rise as you are able. Tikiya Shavari Terua Tikiya <laughs> And I'd like to I'd like to invite up uh, 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 any and all of the Mad River folks to come light candles for us, if you would be so willing. Come on up. Go for it. Susan, you want to do the lighting for us? Yeah, I'll leave the, I'll leave the bracha, okay? You have to press the top and then click it. Bring the light in. Bring the light in. Shabbat shalom. Folks at home, you can unmute yourselves. Wish each other shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom, everyone. It's windy here. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Let's turn to page eight in your Sidurim. Page eight in your Sidurim. How good are your tents, O Jacob, your sanctuaries, O Israel. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
are your tents. Sixteen. Sixteen. So many angels. Holding up this world. Shalom Aleichem. Let's welcome them in. Shalom Aleichem. Yeah. 
clap, they sing, they dance. <laughs> oh, you pay close attention. There's people dancing in the back. <laughs> Page 38. Before we launch into this, let's take a moment and think about the week that we have had. <laughs> holding anything, just to sigh it out. <laughs> Let your shoulders drop. Loosen the, the knots that bind. Think about what it is you want for this moment and for Shabbat. Set your intention. Let's take a deep breath together and exhale.
Kids are calling out. <laughs> Page 50. Let's read this English on the opposite side of the page, page 51. Mari Varavim, Lord of night and day, together. Praised are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, whose word brings on the dusk of evening. Your wisdom opens the gates of dawn. Your understanding regulates time and seasons. The stars above follow their appointed rounds in response to your divine will. You create day and night. You alternate darkness and light. 
You remove the day and bring on the night. You separate one from the other. We call you Lord of heavenly hosts. You are our living God. May you rule over us as you rule over nature. Praised are you, O Lord, who brings peace in us. Amen. Page 52. to the oneness of all, page 54. Shema We'll continue on the page, pages 56 through 59 with the rest of the Shema. If you've never looked at the bottom of the pages there, some wonderful commentary. 56 through 59. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should. Bottom of fifty-eight. Ani Adonai Page sixty, six lines from the bottom. Mi 
page 63 at the bottom. Let's read responsively here. Help us, O God, to lie down in peace, but teach us that peace means more than quiet. Remind us how we live. Grant us the peace that comes from honest dealing so that no fear of discovery will haunt our sleep. Rid us of resentments and hatreds, which rob us of the peace we crave. Liberate us from enslaving habits which disturb us and give us no rest. May we inflict no pain, bring no shame, and seek no profit from another's loss. May we so live that we can face the world with serenity and with grace. May we feel no remorse at night for what we have done during the day. May we lie down in peace tonight and awaken tomorrow to a richer and fuller life. Amen. Amen. Page 64. Sixty-six. Kaddish. As you're able, please rise. May all be safe. May all be safe. It kadal, it kadash me'raba. El madi brachirute ve'amlich malchute. Yeah, hey. 
We take now a few moments in quiet prayer, those at home to unplug from your screens, those here take a moment. The words of the page 69 through 76, and the words of the heart. Inviting up Safira Moschello, 
the Living Tree Alliance and Jacobs and all good things in Vermont. Uh, you'll introduce yourself, but this is part of a series that we've been doing, exploring Shemitah, which we'll learn more about here uh, over, over this month of Elul. Please. <laughs> it's fun to see who's on this video too. <laughs> Great. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Oh, I'm really grateful to be able to share with you in this format tonight. And I want to thank Susan Bachner and the Ritual Committee for inviting me to speak and Susan for really embracing this Shemitah study. <laughs> uh, and thank you, Rabbi David, for your meaningful leadership of our community. And I also want to thank and mention uh, Hazon, uh, environmental Jewish organization that really uh, prompted me in 2007 to get interested in this Shemitah topic. Uh, so I share with you today as a food grower, a community builder, and a wellness coach who enjoys taking the time of re for reflection and personal growth. Today, we'll, what we'll review is what Shemitah means, look at the text a little bit, and try and apply it to our lives. Uh, so the Shemitah year starts in uh, with Rosh Hashanah, uh, which is just 11 days away. So uh, we're stepping into the Shemitah year and it is a seven year cycle. So every year, every seven years, we get the Shemitah year, which means, uh, does anybody know what it means? No. <laughs> so Shemitah literally means to release or to let go. And I am going to talk to you about, about it today with actually four R's. <laughs> uh, and so that's reflected in rest, re, uh, reflect, release, and receive. And my hope is that you'll find a way to make this meaningful in your own life and embrace rest, reflection, release, and receiving. Uh, so we can start with the text. Um, it is mentioned Shemitah in a few different places in the Torah, in particular in uh, Vayikra, Leviticus, and Devarim, Deuteronomy. And I'm going to read you the text from both of those places, as I think it's very interesting. And God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come to the land which I am giving you, then the land shall rest, a Sabbath for Adonai. For six years you shall sow your fields, and for six years you shall prune your vines, and you shall gather in their produce. And in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath for Adonai. You shall not sow your fields, and you shall not prune your vineyard, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be yours to eat, for you and your manservant and your maidservant, and for your settler who re resides with you. So that's from uh, Leviticus and from Devarim, Deuteronomy, it says, at the end of seven years, you shall celebrate the Shemitah year. And this is the manner of the Shemitah. Every creditor shall release any debt owed by his neighbor and his brother and sister when God's Shemitah year comes around. So in, in these texts, in the first one, we hear the word rest. And in the second one, we hear the word release. And so it says, let the land rest and release all debt. Uh, and so the Shemitah has so many different aspects. Uh, and so we're, there's an aspect of bringing it back to equilibrium. But if we go to the rest, what does it mean to let the land rest? And I've been thinking a lot about this. And when I walk around my land, when I don't grow something on the soil, it doesn't just rest and go to sleep and nothing happens, but things grow there and they may not be the things that I really wanted to grow there. Um, and it may look a little, a little wild. Um, but then if I look a little bit closer, I might find that actually these wild weed plants are really nourishing and might be the medicine that I actually need. And we can see that in the dandelion and the yellow dock and the red clover, if you're familiar with these plants. Um, so, and then sometimes also certain plants volunteer themselves, ones that I really like, like tomatoes or a beautiful flower. Um, so there's an aspect in Shemitah of trusting the wild nature of things and that the wild 
will grow up and it will be actually what we need, even though we didn't have as much control in, in what we put there. But if we go back to the text, it doesn't just say rest, let the land rest. It says, for six years, you shall sow your fields and for six years, you shall prune your vines and you shall gather in their produce. So it is actually suggesting that we need to prepare for our rest. We need to, to do the work in order to create the space to, to rest. And so um, from a land perspective, that may mean that we wanna plant a bunch of perennials, um, foods, uh, plants that will come back each year and, and keep nourishing us. And on a personal and organizational level, it's time to uh, take in inventory, get clear on what our, we want to accomplish, what we want to bring into the world for these next six years. Um, and let that, that effort take shape. So, um, uh, and so we're working for six years and then on the seventh year, we rest. However, in those six years of working, we have the seventh day we're told to rest. And so I think this is very interesting in our, in our culture that in our Jewish culture, we're told it's so important to rest. And when I look around at our current American culture, it's like work, 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 productivity. We wanna keep producing, but it's really so important that we rest so that we can be revived for um, the work that we are to do. Um, so once we have taken uh, rest, then we can move to reflection. Oftentimes, if we're resting, we have a more clear aspect of reflection and being able to reflect and see things a little bit differently. So in, our, in taking time to reflect, we need to slow down, quiet ourselves to understand what our work will be for the next six years before the next Shemitah year. And it's an opportunity to consider how we want to be and how we want to show up in the world. And uh, currently we're in the month of Elul and the month of Elul comes around every year and we have a whole month where we're actually encouraged to do reflection work and to uh, do teshuva, which actually means to return, to return to who you are. Uh, so uh, reflection is a big, a big part of this so that then we can refine our characters and get clear on who we want to be <coughs> and show up as that. Uh, oftentimes what emerges when we have this clarity of, of what the next step in the work is to do is there's the aspect of release. And so what we need to release, what no longer serves us, uh, comes up and we realize, okay, I need to let go of this. I need to maybe not, not act in this way or refine my character and focus on growth in other areas. Um, if we come back, uh, to the nature aspect of it. If, if we're growing perennials, we're making a choice to grow those perennials and not other things, right? And so we're releasing some of the other um, things that might grow there. And if we think about it in, uh, in our own lives, choosing, uh, choosing what we want to focus on uh, cause allows us to release other things. And so if we want to cultivate our relationships with our beloveds or with our children, uh, or with our spouses, then we can't necessarily work 24 seven. And so we have to release some of, of that time so that we can intentionally create what we want to have in our lives. Um, and, and of course, releasing is about letting go of control somewhat. And so allowing what, what is to arise and that brings us to the fourth stage of receiving and to receive. So. The Shemitah really is opening us up to receive. Uh, it, we plant and prune for six years and we gather in the produce. So even though on the Shemitah year, we're not supposed to be planting and tending the earth, we are allowed to reap the harvest. And so this is not about denial. This is about resting and reflecting and being able to to step into receiving and enjoying what, uh, the fruits of our labor from the last six years so that then we get recharged and we're ready for the next six years. Um, I, I, uh, and just this aspect of receiving, I'm reminded of my tomatoes and the sun gold tomatoes, which I worked so hard from March until now to get to fruit. 
and now they're fruiting. And some days I'm so busy, I got to do this and this and this, I'm forgetting about the sun gold tomatoes and they're uh, going to rot on the, on the plant. And so the receiving is stopping and picking your tomatoes and eating it mindfully and really taking in that nourishment. So in conclusion, Shemitah is a year when we really uh, shift things up so that we can see them from a different perspective. And we can do this on a personal level, on an organizational level, on an agricultural level, it can apply. We create more time for rest, the way a vacation uh, can just help to reorient us with a new, new perspective. And we step into allowing rather than controlling and take the time for reflection so that we can attune to our true selves and really be, step into our true purpose for being here on the earth. We release what no longer serves us so we can come back to our center and to our truth and so that we can open up to receiving all the blessings that life has to offer. So I wanna take us all in for a one moment of rest and quiet so that we can hear our inner self. So I invite everyone to just take three breaths, two, three deep breaths with me. And so I invite everyone to find some time in the next 11 days before the new year of Rosh Hashanah, before this new Shemitah year, to find some time for rest and quiet and reflection so that you can consider how you want to engage in these principles, how you want to engage in this next cycle. So thank you so much. As a, a community builder, I also want to add that it's an out time to think about our successes over the last six years. And, um, and when we are at the ONIC, I invite you to ask your community member, what have you accomplished in these last six years before we move into the seventh Shemitah year? Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Safira asks just beautiful, beautiful words. Thank you. Taking them to taking them to heart already. Beginning with those breaths that we took. And Safira asked me to lead this song. Uh, that uh, written by Batia Levine, who's actually coming up to Vermont and to Jacobs, God willing, in December. And these are the words, and you can sing along as we get it. That reflect the drush, the words of Torah that you just shared. My first time leading it, so give me a, I don't know what you should give me. Uh, May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive. May I be empty. May I be empty and open to receive the light. May I be empty and open to receive. May I be full. May I be full and open to receive the light. May I be full and open to receive.
in the back of your cedarim, you'll find a prayer for healing. We invite the names of those in need of healing, whether in body or spirit. When we pause, we can add their names all together. For those at home, you're invited to add their names into the chat box. <clears throat> May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say, Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless and heal. Along with all the ill among us, grant insight to those who bring healing, courage, and faith to those who are sick, love and strength to us and to all who love them. God, let your spirit rest upon all who are ill and comfort them. May they and we know a time of complete healing, the healing of the body and the healing of the spirit, speedily and soon, let us say, Amen. <laughs> Bless those in need of healing with Rifua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. We bless all those in need of healing, and we bless you who support them. We turn to the back of your cards, a prayer for Israel. Dove, would you be willing to read our prayer for Israel? Sure. Rock and Redeemer of the people of Israel, bless Israel in its pursuit of a flowering of redemption. Send your light and wisdom to Zion's leaders and advisors and help them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of all who work towards safety, justice, and democracy, counting their efforts with success. Shield the land with your love and spread over it your shelter of peace. May the time be near when all its inhabitants and neighbors dwell together in security and everlasting peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Would you be willing to read a prayer for our countries? Could folks at home hear Dove? Can you hear Dove? Yeah, wonderful. Our God and God of all people, bless and watch over our countries, the United States of America and Canada. Bless our diverse inhabitants equally in the light of your presence that we might build together a society based upon principles of tolerance, justice and compassion. Inspire our leaders with your good counsel that they may act wisely for the good of all our citizens and all peace-loving people throughout the world. May peace and security prevail within our borders and beyond and let us say, Amen. Amen. And a prayer for, you can uh, return your cards as we sing this prayer for peace. Olam chesed yibane. Olam chesed yibane. Thank you. 
as you're able, we rise for our Lenu, page 118. 118. <laughs> Tu betola techa, donaim loch leola rae, nemema, e haia donai, e mele palcola re, paiomau, paiomau, kie. Please have a seat. In a moment, we'll say the Mourner's Kaddish on page 124. This week in the life of our congregation, we remember Arnold Kaplan, father of Susan Bachner, Anne Feynman, mother of Doris Klein, Frida Glockner, grandmother of Shari Vermeulen, George David Frieden, father of Shoshana Frieden, Gerald Zeller, father of Ivy Zeller, Ida Rouse, aunt of Dr. Gretchen Rouse Besser, Leah Rouse, grandmother of Dr. Gretchen Rouse Besser, Lucinda Lurie, mother of Sarah Lurie, Mac Golonsky, father of Randy Link and Fran Bogatti, and grandfather of Allison Link, and Marvin Bernard Gamaroff, father of Simon and David Gamaroff. Are there any other York sites, whether at home, you can put it in the chat box or here? Mourner's Kaddish is on page 124. For those in mourning or observing your site, please rise. Yit Gadal, Yit Kadash, Shame Rabbah, Selma, Dibra, Hirute, Vyamlik, Makute, Bechaye Fon, Uviome Fon, Chaye, Deho, Beit Israel, Bagala, Vizman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya, 
Bechayim Aleinu Ve'al Ko Yisrael Imru Amen. Ose Shalom Bimroma Huya Se Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Ko Yisrael Ve'al Ko Yoshvete Ve'al Amen. May their memories be for a blessing. Um, we turn to page 170. Page 170 as we, uh, as we say this psalm for the month of Elul. Four lines from the bottom. Four lines from the, sorry, four lines from the top, uh, halfway through. <laughs> Have a, a few announcements before we wrap things up here. Uh, first, uh, just resources, ways to help, and uh, out in the community. If you are looking to train for a new career, or if you know someone who is, you can send them to visit the United Way of Lemoyle. An amazing, all kinds of wonderful information, including to see the many job training opportunities in our area and state. Uh, and there are programs for everything from getting a high school credential to healthcare uh, work to welding and much more. And many are free. Uh, and uh, uh, so head on over to United Way of Lamoille County website. Tonight, we have our Oneg sponsor by the Mad River Valley Jewish community. Thank you so much. Please, everyone, stay and eat, nosh a little bit. Um, next Friday evening, we have Priscilla Minkin, uh, 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 wonderful uh, Jacob's member who is going to be sharing her own words of wisdom uh, after many years of being a uh, interfaith uh, chaplain uh, and, uh, and, uh, and all good things. We'll hear from you next week. Six o'clock here, as always. Uh, um, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemini Yatsirin, Simchas Torah. It's all coming at you live here in this beautiful uh, sanctuary of ours here, uh, and and also virtually. Uh, and so, if you haven't looked at our high holiday schedule, it didn't fit on one page. It's actually two pages. There's a lot, there's a lot uh, to, be, uh, to be shared uh, and to join in. There will be food, there will be music, there will be uh, uh, schmoozing, there will be learning. Um, if you saw the email that went out today, wonderful learning opportunity, second day of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and uh, there will be building sukkahs with many hands that make light work. Uh, and there will be pizza in the hut, and there will be all kinds of fun things. So uh, register. This is your uh, uh, Monday is your last chance to register for the Yisker Book of Remembrance. So please do that. And also for the Break the Fast. So we have enough food for the hungry people. Uh, so please uh, join us. Um, I, I know. And secondly, about the high holidays, uh, 
we, we need folks to welcome and usher people into our space. Talk to Emily over there uh, or email jcogs at jcogs.org and say, I can help out for an hour or, or two uh, for one of the holidays. We'd be grateful to have your support. Uh, it, it takes a, a village to put on these high holidays. Uh, so please come and support. Um, also, uh, um, with the uh, tragic loss of James Besser, uh, a, the son of, of Gretchen Besser, uh, who many of us know, uh, there is a Shiva on Monday at 5.30 p.m., all on Zoom, uh, and uh, I'm sure Gretchen and family would be uh, comforted to see, to see you there. But there are also Simchas, and so we're going to share uh, anything good in your lives that you'd like to share from the last week or weeks. Uh, I'm going to invite you to at least come up to this microphone. Sure. I got to attend an amazing barbecue right here in this tent put on by our amazing Jake Hogs board. And it was so much fun. I didn't get all my auction items, but I got enough to be very happy. I am looking at you, Phoebe Simon. Is right <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you guys so much. It was great. Our amazing board. It was such a wonderful event. Thank you. Such a simcha. Other simchas. Other. Oh, yay! Come, Hi. come a little closer. Yeah. My husband Alex and I celebrated eight years this week together. Plus two, we knew each other before that wedding. And our son almost died. Yay! Mazel, mazel. And I have two of my closest friends up from Connecticut. One is my friend since we're seven or eight years old and the other we had our children at the same time and so i'm so happy they're here tonight yeah and, and folks at home if you want to put your symptoms in the chat box we'll we'll read them out how many footnotes oh no okay on the uh day of that wonderful barbecue yeah a visitor and his family walked by with two dogs and the board invited them to join the celebration. I was absolutely thrilled. Nice. I thought that was wonderful. Benilut Hasadim. Nice. We have Claudia, who is harvesting the first ears of corn today and beat out the raccoons. Do it. <laughs> Love it. Just come on up to the mic if you're ready. Bet. Yeah, so we have a little bit of show and tell here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my dad, who's up from Long Island. Yeah. Oh. We haven't seen each other in person since February of 2020. So, uh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Stanley, yes. See, see, see. Kids up. And uh, yeah. congratulations to you all. I wish you were Good Shabbos and a coming happy and a happy new year. Thank you. Good Shabbos and Shana to you. Um, oh, I am halfway to 100. Oh. Halfway to 100. <laughs> halfway to 100. Mel called you a baby. <laughs> you would know, Mel. Amazing. Anything else from home? Anything else? Folks at home, Simchas, uh, amazing, great. Yes. Grandson's birthday. Grandson's birth. Amalia's grandson's birthday. Mazel tov. Very exciting. Bobby, you're coming up. Coming. All right. I twisted your arm. Here we go. I've been married 44 years today. Wow. Even though, even though he doesn't practice Judaism, we still love each other. Not married at three. <laughs> Uh, Stanley was the first house guest. Of, um, nice. A first, a first, a first guest, <laughs> a first guest in their new home. 
A blessing indeed. That's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Good. So uh, if you're at home, grab your wine, grape juice. Hello there, George. The Kinderlach are coming as you're able. Please rise. Oh. Did you tell that there were kids here? Uh, <laughs> Aren't they amazing? So happy. Ugh. Delicious. Thankfully, we have a kiddish, so we don't have to eat their deliciousness. <laughs> All right. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Hadafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Dishanu Vemitzotah Veratzav HaYu some at home. And um, just a couple small things. At the end of the service, grab the sidurim and let's collect them and other ritual items for the for any helpers. Want to just bring them inside. That'd be wonderful. Uh, and, uh, and off we go. Think of something in the service that you'd like to carry into the rest of your Shabbat. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Amotzi Lechem Min Aaretz Amen Say hi. 